Everything around you is a source of learning and inspiration. So it was for me, and can it be for you? My name is Shami Ramesh, and I'm an ethical hacker, an entrepreneur, and up till a couple of months ago, a severe anxiety patient. Most of you were born in Karachi. Most of you were born in households that were well equipped and developed in terms of technology, in terms of uh, development, in, in terms of literature. I opened my eyes in a small 200 yards house in Multan, whose internal street was as big as just this door. And I was a dumb kid. I was so dumb that I used to think that goats grow up into cows. Life moved on. And the story that I'm going to tell you here today is that my life is a spiral of ashes to flames. It is a continuous cycle in which I've been burnt down and flew up again. I don't know Phoenix. No worries. So I was saying I don't call myself a phoenix as of yet because I'm yet to achieve the point where I completely fail and are torn apart. My life is a story of complete failures instead of success. What you see about me, what you hear about me is not, uh, is not the complete story. So, born in Multan in a household that was old, I was always taught that ed education was the only thing that I had to look forward to, which was mostly true. But moving on, in 2003, me and my family, due to my father's job, we moved to Karachi, here. I was scared of failing. That's why I worked hard. Which, and uh, afterwards, I got to realize that being scared of failure is not what should drive your motivation. In, here in Karachi, I got admitted into, into an army public school, and I studied hard, real hard, without a second thought of going anywhere else. Studying hard made me in top of my class. I was popular among students, but only as a nerd. There was nothing else there. Moving on, my life came to a standpoint where I thought that I had achieved a, something that my parents and everyone would be proud of. But le, le, little did I know that failure was waiting for me at the end of the line. I got, I got it because I was one of the experimental children of my students in terms of education. They didn't know where to have me admitted to get proper education. So to, to all of that surprise, I was admitted into a government school government college, where I came to know that education is like the horns of a donkey. It does not exist. I went to, I went to my class in the college uh, on the first day, and I sat there from 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. The janitor came in, and he told me, what are you doing here? I told him I'm here to study. He told me, this place, no one comes here to study. You should go home. And that was the time, first in my life, I had turned to ashes. Because I had no source of learning. I had no source to continue my education. And my parents were off the idea that this entire process is just because of my anxiety. So moving on, my intermediate came to an end. Uh, because I, I, did not, I had not studied, and it was a time where I was a complete failure in my studies. I, I applied to every university in Karachi, including this one, including this one, and almost all universities in Islamabad. 
And guess who got rejected from all those universities? Moving on, I got, I got admission into a university that was near to my house based on self-finance and stuff like that. And then I decided that here, education is being taught. And I had to learn and I had to come out of the ashes. Came the point when I started, started getting so much into studies that I forgot about every single aspect of my life that, were going, that was going on. And then came the day when in, a, in an auditorium such as this one, there was a guy speaking about cybersecurity and ethical hacking. I was so inspired and impressed by that guy that I w went up to him and I was like, sir, I want to work with you. I want to learn from you. He told me to send, me his, to send he, him my CV. I did that. And he, and he called me up and he told me, okay, I like your CV. It was one pager, just an empty CV. He told me that, okay, come on, let's work together. To my surprise, the guy that was talking on the stage, knowing all about cybersecurity and ethical hacking, knew nothing. Six months down the line, I was again in ashes, learning nothing from the guy, having no intellect about cybersecurity, and working as a clerk for free for someone who I barely knew. Moving forward, I decided with a friend of mine that I would self-learn this entire field. So I did that. I started self-learning. But since I was an electronics engineering student, there was less I could learn by myself. Cybersecurity is mostly about coding, it's mostly about programming, it's mostly about logics. So at that point in time, I faced a lot of difficulties. A lot of difficulties, but this one good thing happened. I found a flaw in one of the websites that is called Zendesk, and, the, and they, did, they told me that they were sending me a reward all the way from the U.S. Now, in, in a family like mine, in, in, from generations to generations, we don't get presents from across the country. So that was the first present that I was getting. And guess what it was? To, I was thinking that I would be getting a, a bag full of dollars and whatnot. And I was awarded with a t-shirt that was red in color and it had a sumo wrestler on it. But still, kept on, I kept on going. But that was the hardest part of my life, learning. Because I didn't know anything. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know who to learn from. And I didn't know who to call for help. The, the people in the U.S. programs about cybersecurity and bug bounty hunting told me to go away. They told me to shut up. They told me that I was a time waster. They told me that I had nothing in my mind that they could get help from. Again, I was ashes. And one day, something good happened. I tried to, to Google and Facebook. I tried it. For, for the limitless, limited knowledge that I have, I tried to hack into Google and Facebook. And to my surprise, I, I found one, a very critical flaw in one of Facebook's Then came the time when those ashes turned into flames. Because I believed that I could and I, I can learn from what other people have already posted online, I moved forward. But like I told you, my life has been a spiral of ashes and flames. So there was another failure just waiting for me at the end of the line. One day, an algorithm in Google's platform changed, and my rank was dropped from 1 to 100,000. Google ranks researchers and bug bounty hunters based on their quality of research. And their algorithm changed, and I was dropped from 1 to 100,000. But still, there was hope. I kept on going. I kept on uh, receiving appreciations from different kinds of companies. And to my surprise, I was on in the top 20th list again. But in, in the beginning, I said that everything around you is a source of learning and inspiration. I, I, I forgot the fact that I'm, I'm getting acknowledged by international folks and people all over the world, but what am I giving back? Because a tree that 
descends from its roots only declines. Moving forward, when university had completed and I, I and I, I got, I tried to get a job in one of the companies. I went there for an interview and they hired me. And after three months, I was fired. Fired for overthinking and oversimplifying things. Now, again, ashes. Then came the biggest break of my life. I saw, because we, we hackers, we ethical hackers, we work at nights. Came the biggest break of my life. I saw an ad of, a, of an incubator in Lahore and I applied to it. I had a very stupid idea to provide cybersecurity services to all kinds of companies in Pakistan. And there were 11 other startups that were pitching their idea there. All with developed products. I couldn't even spell entrepreneurship at that time. And to my surprise, the judges liked my idea so much that I was the only startup that was selected from Karachi to go to that incubator in Lahore. I had, I had made good money by that time. I was, I was one of the top hackers in Google's and HackerOne's platform. But still, like I told you, my life is a spiral from ashes to flames. And there was just another stupid thing waiting to happen later in the time at that point. I tried to build my company in a way that technical people do, not as entrepreneurs do. So that was the biggest mistake that I did while building my company. Moving forward, I, I got an email from, from a company called Dark Reading, which is like the Forbes of cybersecurity that, because I, I, my research had been well known all around the world, and I published some papers in universities as well, that my research about security and ethical hacking, these guys were going to rank me the third best bug bounty hunter of all time. Now that was a big deal. That was a really big deal. I said, okay, sure, go ahead. I didn't think that it was a big deal at that time, but it, it really was. And to my surprise, I got the attention of media all over the world that a, a, some guy from Pakistan, which is, a, which is considered as a third world country, is an ethical hacker going places. That projected a good, good view of the country. But like I told you, ashes and flames everywhere. The next day, when the news came out, I was in Africa. And I got the news from my, from my co-workers back at home that my co-founder had left the company. We had a working company, a company that was generating revenue in terms of dollars, thousands of dollars a month. And my co-founder had left my company. That was a big setback for me. But still, I moved on. I decided to go and tell the guy that if you left the company, it's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build another one. No worries. So most of, you, most of you people who know me know that the name of my company changed from Cyflon to Relix. The true reason is this. Moving on, when I, 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 then I moved on forward and my company, we, we were generating revenues again. Everything was very good. We were doing projects for different kinds of people all over the world. But like I said, ashes and flames all over the place. I did some work for an ad agency in Miami. It was a shady, it, it was a super ethical job. There was nothing wrong with it. But these guys, since they were ad companies, that ad companies are very good at defaming and repetition management of people. These guys decided, they thought, and they literally like they were asking me to hack into someone else's site because they wanted the data, but I, but I completely refused. And they threatened, and they threatened me that they will, you know, disclose all my secrets and make things up and everything like that, all my usernames and passwords online. That was the time I realized that I was a patient of anxiety. All my life, it was all, all, all around me, all near me, but that was the real time I knew that anxiety had gotten to me. So I called up my friend, I told him, I asked him that, what can I do? What can I do to cure this disease that, that is continuously haunting my life? What do I do? I'm literally gonna throw up. 
I literally remember sitting uh, in that incubator at night and just crying for no reason at all. And my friend told me, we can recommend you pills, we can recommend you everything, but the brain that you have, the brain that got you, the rank that you are at today, is going to completely go away. I told him that, okay, I'm going to triumph from this. And today, ladies and gentlemen, the name Shami Ramir is working with the co-founder of Apple, C. Wozniak. I am, I am the part of an advisory board which is chaired by John McAfee of McAfee Securities. I'm also, I'm also a part of European Union Cybersecurity Council in which Pakistan was never considered. But, but like I told you, but like I told you, the fact that everything around you is a source of inspiration and learning. My inspiration comes from a tree. A tree. We see trees every day, but we don't analyze what they're doing. We don't think as they do. A broken clock tells time twice a day correct. Ants are a source of inspiration in terms of hard work. A tree that descends from its roots always declines. So never forget where you come from, never forget where your roots are. Thank you.